wouldn't do it if I just didn't, you know, passionately believe it was the right thing to do. You know, I have so many opportunities from this country. I just don't want to see us fall backwards. You know, so... I was Hillary Clinton famously tearing up on the campaign trail in 2008 while answering a question about dealing with the rigors of a presidential campaign that, of course, uh, credited for launching her to victory in New Hampshire. Joining me now, Hari Savugan. He's former national press secretary for the DNC and Lynn Sweet, columnist and Washington bureau chief of the Chicago Sun-Times. And Hari is someone who's been on the other side of the press during this. Here's the way that I, I, I view the sort of paradox of authenticity in a political campaign. The, the press uh, demands authenticity, ranks people by authenticity, also demands total discipline and no gaffes. And those two things are, of course, like normal people say stuff all the time that could be misinterpreted or that they regret, but that's part of actually being authentic. And so in some ways it's kind of a mugs game trying to live up to these expectations of authenticity. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And I think that's the paradox of Joe Biden in a lot of ways. He's so honest and sometimes that honesty uh, leads to, you know, a gap, and, and, uh, but more times than not, it, it allows people to see who he really is and, and, uh, and create that sort of empathy uh, with the American people. I think when Joe was talking about last night, when he was talking about uh, Bo's uh, fellow servicemen coming up to him and, and talking about surfing with him, uh, and Joe breaking down and saying, you know, I can't do that, I think what he was referring to, I don't know this for sure, but what I think he was referring to is, you know, as President of the United States, you can't afford those kinds of right. uh, emotions. Um, but but I, you're absolutely right, because there, there is that paradox, but I think that's what allows people to connect uh, with, uh, with the Vice President in such a meaningful way. Lynn, do you think that's a fair characterization of the way the political press approaches this, this sort of, this, this, this sort of seeking authenticity um, and, and sort of analyzing whether people are seeming staged or awkward, at the same time punishing things that might be authentic but are also gaffed? Well, uh, I think you make it a little bit more complicated than it has to be. When you're talking about the raw emotion of your son dying, uh, where you don't have to worry about one wrong word about policy or anything, you do come across as more authentic. You know, a reason people stick to talking points is that they don't want to make mistakes. And my God, I think we're all grateful that we do shows like this and don't say something because you can't take it back. But having said that, of course, the, I think the overriding thing here is that the the Biden is getting sympathy because if you couldn't be authentic, if you couldn't speak about your sorrow and the death of your son, it almost would seem unnatural, wouldn't right. it? Yeah, it would, but I could also imagine another politician handling it very differently and not talking expansively about it. I can, I, I mean, I can imagine a, a variety of ways. I can also, I can also imagine, um, you know, uh, uh, Michelle Goldberg made this point that a female politician making that same point about breaking down and feeling overwhelmed with emotion oh, would be much I, more dangerous. I don't know. I think it depends how people are. Someone who's a, a very veteran Biden watcher told me that part of how he processes his grief is through talking. Right. This is very characteristic, and I don't know if this is a gender thing or not, though of course women always have to be careful if they tear up or cry. I guess my point, though, is more that, like, it's like the mo what I, I loved watching that interview last night because it felt like it was existing in a space of just, uh, it, it, it had left the sort of fourth dimension of politics or media. It felt like I was watching a human being, uh, two human beings, like, just talk about some of the most profound aspects of life and suffering and faith and things like that. And, you know, I, I was reminded of that documentary about Mitt Romney that was on Netflix, which was, he was the most I ever liked Mitt Romney. It was like him just being a person, right, talking about things with his family. And then sometimes you say, well, why can't that be the guy on stage, Harry? But, of course, that can't be the guy on stage. No, it can't. I mean, there's a difference between uh, being able to go on a show and talk about the loss of your son and running a campaign, uh, you know, and I think one of the things that, that the vice president hit on last night that's very important is is he's got to be ready for this. He's got to be able to say to the American people that he can give 110 percent. I mean, a campaign is a grueling thing. You're up at 4 a.m. every day uh, and you're not going to bed till till midnight or one and you're shaking a million hands and you're in a bunch of planes and governing is is equally hard, especially in the White House. Um, so having that that, that sense of uh, contemplation, which he showed yeah. last night, I think is also uh, really important, it's, and it serves as a stark contrast to what we're seeing on the Republican side, uh, you know, and uh, I think that's also terribly important for the American people to see. 
You know, I, Lynn, I was thinking about uh, Hillary Clinton's favorability ratings, and there's this pattern throughout her whole career, right? They're very high when she's not running for office, and they come down uh, when when they when she is running for office, right? And and, and that's and that. That is instructive as to what I think uh, Vice President Biden will face if exactly. he gets in the race. Now, this is a, this is a uh, what a grace period. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly the point. And I thought about you know Colbert saying everyone likes Joe Biden and then talking about you know the most tragic, overwhelming, awful thing you can imagine you know a father having to deal with. And but you know right. if he declares a month from now. You're like you're back in the pit, and people are gonna like making fun of you saying something out of line. And like it is, it's brutal. Politics is, you know, at this level is brutal. Uh, the only one who seems immune right now yeah. from paying any consequence of a gap is Donald Trump. Yeah. But who knows? Who knows how long that lasts? Harry Sullivan and uh, Lynn Sweet, thanks for joining us. That is all.